John, chapter 15, verses 6 through 15. Jesus says, whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love just as I have kept my Father's commandments, and I abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends, if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Will you join me in prayer? All throughout my days, I will seek your peace. Let me hear your voice singing over me. When my weary heart drives me to despair, in the shadows, Lord, let me find you there. Into you I will hasten. Into you I will lean. Light of the world, my only shelter, King of love, my refuge be. King of love, my refuge be. Friend of broken hearts and all of the lost, let me find my strength in your precious cross. And with every breath that you give to me, help me glorify your majesty. Into you I will hasten, into you I will of the world, my only shelter, King of love, my refuge be, King of love, my refuge be, into you I will hasten, into you I will lean, light of the world, my only shelter, king of love, my refuge be, king of love, my refuge be. Oh, holy God, 
In Jesus, you came to live among us that he might be the vine to which we could cling. We pray, Lord God, that you will help us to stay close to our Lord Jesus and by doing so, stay close to you. For you are the source of our strength. You are the source of our healing. You are the source of all that is beautiful and all that is to be. Our God, help us to understand that there are yet so many who do not know the peace and the joy of Christ. And help us to share our witness with others that they too may be a disciple of Jesus and come to know the deep meaning that life can hold for those who have faith in the God of creation, salvation, and our future. We pray this now in Jesus' precious name. Amen. This week and last week, Pastor Red and I are sharing with you some of what we know about stewardship. What it means to have been gifted by God with so much and what it means to share that with which God has blessed us with others. Last week we talked about how we are called as God's people, as disciples of Jesus, to go out into the world and to make disciples of all nations, baptizing in the name of Jesus and bringing them to know the God of creation and the God of salvation whom we have come to know. This is our mission as a church, our mission as St. John's and also our mission as the United Methodist Church to make disciples for Jesus Christ, for the transformation of this world. I pray that in your life as a person of Christ, you have known transformation and that that transformation of your life, of my life, is happening every day. That your faith is changing you, is making you more and more a reflection of Jesus. Oftentimes when we speak of stewardship, we speak of the things materially that God has given to us. And oftentimes some of us might want to put our pocketbook away or our checkbook or our credit card or uh, just basically hide <laughs> but there is so much more to stewardship than just the money that we give to God's kingdom surely that is a part of it and it is part of what it means to be a member of the church and a part of God's kingdom is to give of that materially that God has given to us but it is more than that because stewardship is also about sharing the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ with all people. To share the message of our Lord Jesus that they may know his love, his care for them, and his forgiveness that has changed your life and has certainly changed my life. I am grateful every day that I don't have to pay for my sin that Jesus Christ has paid the debt that I owe for all the ways in which in the past I broke God's heart and that I still today will be breaking God's heart. I praise God today for knowing that truth and having been able to live into that truth throughout my life is the greatest gift that was ever given to me. And so we want to remember that the greatest gift we give to others is to tell them about Jesus, to tell them about God's love for them, to let their lives be connected to Jesus as the vine, to let them be branches that grow green and strong and produce the fruit of the Holy Spirit as you and I are called, to produce the fruit that God gives through our faith. We live in a world that needs more than ever to hear the message of this gospel. I'm gonna ask you a question. Have you ever been hungry, really, really hungry? As in perhaps you fasted for a couple days or 
You fasted because you didn't have anything to eat. Have you ever been that hungry? If you were ever that hungry and someone offered you something to eat, did you feel the joy and the thanksgiving in your heart that someone showed you and told you where food was available? In my understanding of this gift we have in the gospel of Jesus Christ, it is like someone who is very, very hungry, finding food or being given food, and then being quiet and telling nobody else where they can find that same nourishment. Not sharing that information so that those who are so hungry as well don't know that there is nourishment available. There is no deeper hunger than the hunger that, as Augustine said, is an empty place in our hearts that belongs only to God. If you know that's true, if you know that empty place has been filled by God's love and by the presence of Jesus in your heart, how can any of us withhold that spiritual food from another person? And so our stewardship is about making disciples for Jesus Christ, for the transformation of this world. That is what we do as God's church. We are to be about the telling of the story of where you find the true food, the food that is heavenly food, that fills the soul and the heart. It is about bringing those who are hungry to God. How then do we do this? Why do we do this? Why we do the offering of the story of Jesus and the gospel message to others is because they are hungry. Because you can't be in this world not knowing the God who loves and forgives and heals and strengthens and redeems us, making us new creatures, not knowing that is as though that hole in your heart is never filled. But when you have known that truth, you and I know where the water is, where the food is, where the vine is to which we cling, and we tell other people, to come with us. Not just where to find food, but come with me and help me to show you the one who will fill your life with joy. The scripture tells us that we can know the joy of Christ. It tells us that in clinging to the vine, who is Jesus, we will know the the love of God that pours through us and into the leaf and the branches that are, that are our lives from the Jesus who, in God, sends to us all that we will ever need. How you might offer to others this gift unparalleled in anything you'll ever give another person is by inviting them to worship with you. Come into worship with me and sit with me and let's rejoice and show God thanksgiving and love and the hope we have in our hearts will be multiplied again and again because we are breathing in the spirit of God and we are going out from here and we are filled with God's spirit able to share with others invite them to come with you to worship we often talk about welcoming worship and not only coming and being here ourselves, but bringing others into the place of worship here at St. John's or into the opportunities you have as a Christian to worship in other places, to bring others and allow them to know Jesus. But sometimes we don't always remember that it also means a welcoming church is waiting. <laughs> have you ever had this feeling it's time for the passing of the peace. You look around and you see some people you don't know or you're not sure who they are. You decide, you know, I'm not going to say anything because that person just might be a member of the church, maybe even been a member for a year, and I just don't know them because, you know, we have those three services. And in those three services, they could be up there, they could be down there anytime, and I wouldn't even know they're here. So therefore, I won't speak to them because they might 
be offended. Have you ever had that thought cross your mind? I've actually had people say that to me. The reason I don't reach out to people I don't know is because I'm afraid they remember. You know what? They're looking at you too. And they're saying, I'm probably not going to speak to that person over there because I ought to know who they are because there are three services and I didn't probably... Right? <laughs> to be a welcoming church means that move out and talk to others and let them know we're so glad they're here. Not just here in, in the sanctuary, but throughout the buildings and even in the parking lot. Let people know. And especially those you're not sure who they are. What a wonderful thing to go up and say to somebody, I don't know your name, but I would love to. My name is, and I'm so glad you're here. So one of the ways in which we share the joy of Christ with others is we invite them to wonderful, welcoming, joyful worship. Another is that we invite them to a study group with us to grow as the branches on the vine grow, as we study God's word, as we draw closer to our Lord through the study of his word. What a marvelous thing to invite someone to come with us and to study and to learn and to grow too and to be one of those beautiful leaves that grows green and full and one day becomes able to produce the, the grapes or the fruit of the spirit that we are called to produce because their faith along with our faith is growing in strength. Bring others to study God's word with you so that they too can know the joy of what it means to dwell and abide in the vine that is Jesus. And invite them to service with you. To serve Christ is like nothing else you'll ever do. Because for us, when we serve the Lord, there are abundant blessings that come our way. Abundant blessings. How can we hold people away from that blessing by not telling them, please come with me. Help me to distribute meals. Help me to stay with families during Family Promise Week. Help me to be a part of what it means to bring cans of food for the sake of others who are hungry. Be a part of serving Christ in all the variety of ways that we have to do so here in this congregation right here. We can serve in so many ways. What a blessing it is to offer to someone who is hungry for meaning in their life, to offer not only to show them, but to bring them to service with you into the work of God's kingdom through this church. Stewardship is about sharing what we have. The greatest of all gifts ever given to any of us is the faith that we were taught, the trust in Jesus Christ that we were taught at often the knees of those who loved us best, by teachers that we may still remember, by persons in our lives who still for us are mentors, who teach us daily how to live by the way they lived before us. This is the greatest gift we have to offer others even beyond anything materially we do, to bring the message of Jesus into a tangible place with those who can come to know him better by our invitation means that we then are disciples who are inviting others to become disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. In case you have not noticed lately, there is a great deal of pain and suffering in this world. If you invite one child, one person, one friend or coworker, one neighbor, to come and to know the love God has for them, when we do that, we become a part of the healing that God wants to do transforming this world, this broken, sinful world, into what God has intended for the world to be 
and for us to be. We invite you to be good stewards of all that God has given. And most of all, that we tell the truth of God's love and bless other people by letting them know the joy of Christ, inviting them to come with you and abide in the vine that is Jesus. Let us pray. Thank you, most wonderful and loving God. We know that we can help so many people if we will live before them the truth of your gospel by being people who have the gifts of the Spirit that have been given to us, that we pour upon the lives of others, people of love, gentleness, joy, forgiveness, peace, long-suffering. But we also know, Lord, we have a gift to give others that is the offering of Jesus Christ to them. Help us to be persons who invite others into the presence of Jesus by saying, come with me. Be a part of the worship of God. Be a part of learning more about God. Be a part of serving God with me. Thank you today for calling us your children and claiming us as your own and for letting us abide in you as the vine who allows us as branches to grow from you and to become more like you. Let it not stop with us, Lord God. Help us to find those who are hungry, for we know what it is to be hungry, and to offer to all whom we meet the bread of heaven, the true nourishment of the soul that is the love and the presence of Jesus in us. Thank you, Lord God, for the privilege of serving in your kingdom. Help us not to waste another moment bringing those who are hungry to your food. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our final hymn is number 428. Please stand if you are able as we sing.